So we've got Jarlis Watson from Eckenville Distillery, who's got a big unveil to show us, and hopefully we can share some details about this uh, new release. So yeah, hey, sir, Jarlis, sir. thank you. Welcome back to Belfast. Thanks a lot. So yeah, um, well, um, we've been talking about this whiskey and tasting this whiskey for um, for two years now. It's a long, um, a long waited release. I think we first tasted this whiskey as a sixteen-year-old. Yeah. Um, in Whiskey Live in Dublin, maybe uh, two years ago, a year and a half anyway ago. And um, yeah, we're finally getting around to bring it out as an 18 year old. Um, so it's our Dunville's for your 18 year old single malt port and rum, rum finish. Um, it's already won um, several awards. Uh, Jim Barry's Best Single Craft Irish Whiskey, um, Best Irish Whiskey. Up to 21 at the World Whiskey Awards and a gold medal at the Irish Whiskey Awards for the same age group. And it's, um, yeah, I guess, um, I guess when we took over Dunville, so we brought the Dunville's name, we have a Dunville's name by like four, five, six years, and it wasn't something we took lightly. Yeah. You know, the idea behind the Dunville's name, we always said that if we were going to take on an old Belfast brand, something as rich and historic as Dunville, we were going to do it justice. We weren't going to try and put in a three or four year blend and shift big numbers. We were going to try and the line we the line we always use was we we're going to put Dunville's back at the top table of world whiskies, not just Irish whiskies, but world whiskies. And that's a very bold statement, and it's a very bold statement for somebody as young as actually called distillery to make. But we can still make those statements, and we can still try and follow it up as best we can with the very best whisky we can do. And certainly, I think in this eighteen year old done in this eighteen year old rum furnished release with the port and rum, it, it's. I, it's an exceptional whiskey, and it's a whiskey that I would proudly put beside anybody's 18-year-old whiskey in the world and say that that's our 18-year-old whiskey, and we're proud of it. And um, and yeah, so it's finally uh, been re it's finally it's here. It's yeah. Here. So as you know, we're having a we're having our um, press release. We're having our launch on this Thursday coming in the Heart Bar, Belfast. Yes. And we're hoping that it will be on general release um, next week. Okay, so for those that aren't familiar with the Dunville's brand, you want to just talk a little bit about the historic significance of Dunville's, the role it played in the north, uh, and why you came to acquire it, and, and what it means. Yeah, well, we acquired it probably. We acquired it probably by chance. It wasn't designed. Um, in truth, we were aware of Dunville's. We didn't think it would be available. And the, the, the person who owned the old Dunville Company Limited, the limited company, approached us about five to six years ago, wanting to know if we would. If we would want to run with the brand, um, I think we took about five minutes to think about it, and it was yeah. a, anybody who knows Dunville's, it was a no-brainer, as, lo as long as you were as long as you were going to do it justice. And that was the key thing for us, to do it justice, you know. We, we've been doing Dunville's now for five, six years, we started off with the, the PX10, yeah. through to the PX12, the three crowns, the three crowns paid it, and now the Fiori 18, and I, I, I think you'll agree, in all those whiskies, we have tried our best to put out the very best whiskey could possibly be for that age group. Yeah. You know, using speciality craft and, 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 and the like. Uh, Dunville's, so Dunville's dates back to 1808. Um, the Royal Irish Distillery was built um, maybe a mile and a half from where we currently sit, yes. uh, where the Royal Victoria Hospital is now. Um, at one time, it was probably the, one of the biggest distilleries in the world. Um, certainly in Bernard's tour of the distilleries of UK and Ireland in the late 1800s, um, he would tell you that Dunville's warehouses of Irish whiskey were bigger than anybody's warehouses in the world. They, they, they had more whiskey in the warehouses than anybody in the world. Uh, they were making six million gallons of whiskey a year. And up until 1936, when the distillery went silent, and they, they went actually silent voluntarily. They, they were not, unlike most Irish, unlike most big Irish brands, Royal Irish distilleries did not wind up uh, were not wiped up, they were not, didn't win the liquidation, or they weren't bought and closed down. What happened was that the Dunville families would have run out of theirs. Yeah. Uh, there was nobody coming through in the, in the Dunville family to take over the reins, and the board decided voluntarily in 1936 to wind it up, and this area fell silent. Yeah. Okay, and so you've taken it over, you've obviously got some great releases to date, and some many awards for. Yeah, so, whiskeys, so, so. Said, so we turned it over, and it, it was it was paramount for us to to bring back what we refer to as the spirit of Belfast. Dunville's is the spirit of Belfast, 
Um, and we had tried to reform some of those old relationships. So the Distillery Football Club, which are one of the oldest football clubs in the Northern Ireland League, um, are, are now once again sponsored by Dumbbells. Uh, the, the Distillery Football Club started off as a club uh, for the workers in the distillery. They played in Dumbbell Park. Dumbbell Park was their ground in the Grobler Road. And it was important for us to try and forge those old alliances and to try and bring back not just the brand, but those affiliations and bring back the family again. Yes. And we're working away at that. And at the same time, yes, we're working away at trying to bring in some high-end some high end releases. And I suppose, there I said five minutes ago, we made this statement that we would try and put Dunville's back at the top of World Whiskies. And that, that, that's a bold statement, and I get that. Um, and we've worked very hard on this on this particular release. Uh, what you have here is a, a rather large um, presentation box. Uh, it's very substantial, um, and I think we wanted we, we we wanted to put Dunville's on the map once and for all. We wanted to put out a release that really would get people's attention and to highlight the potential of the Dunville's brand. And. Um, we probably went a bit overboard. <laughs> in the you release. certainly didn't take in, any shortcuts in, on this. In yeah, all, but we don't take shortcuts. We, don't, we, we, we yeah. try not to. But I mean, certainly, if anything, we went overboard on this. Yeah. A, a wee bit, as you'll see when we're doing all box. And, and the, I mean, the whiskey itself, you've had the whiskey a few times. Yeah, it's an absolutely it superb whiskey. A, a 41 year old. Uh, the, we were approached about three years ago with the offer to buy this 41 year old rum. These eight casts of 41 year old rum. He wanted half a million pounds. I drive him down fast. He wanted half a million pounds for this rum. We knew F all that rum, and we didn't have half a million pounds, so we yeah. very uh, slightly declined. But we asked to taste the rum, and we tasted it, and we were just blown away by the depth, and not just depth of flavour, but that layer upon layer upon layer upon complexity. layer upon layer of flavour and complexity. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was really just like complexity stacked upon complexity. It was unreal, and we sort of thought we. <laughs> we really have to get our hands in these casks. Um, that wasn't straightforward because the casks had been promised to somebody else, um, but we, we had relationships with Belfast and we managed to do a bit of a deal for some Akronville new made liquid, and we, we, we ended up with a cast. We filled a um, 15 year old single malt, double distilled single malt, yeah. uh, nearly four years ago now. And that was originally bourbon cask? That was originally bourbon cask, yes. Yeah. So 15 years of bourbon cask, and we know that, that double distilled single malt. I mean, it's just a, it's a superb single malt in its own light. It has those light green grassy notes and those orchard fruit kind of three. It does. It lends itself very well to those lighter, lighter furnaces as well as the PX furnaces. And um, yeah, we just knew as soon as we, as soon as we smelled these bars, tasted the rum, it, it had to be a 15 year old whipped cream. It needed the structure of a 15 year old yeah. to stand up against the structure of the rum. Uh, we initially thought it would be in for a year, um, and after a year we had a great whiskey. We had a whiskey that was just, it was all leather and golden Virginia tobacco and sweet, it was just all these sweet notes and the rum was in there and it didn't sugar, but it didn't have a finish. Right. You know, and being 57% and being quite a dry at, at, that, at that strength, it's just hard to get that So that's finish. the cast strength? is. Yeah, percent. so it's, 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 cast, it, it's bottled at cast strength, so it's bottled at single cast on, on cast strength, so you will have cast strength with green cast number and bottle number on the release, so there'll be eight separate casts being released, um, and feel free to buy one of each. Yes, oh, no, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so Graham, 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 myself, and Shane are tasting this whiskey at a 16, and we're getting great reviews at 16, and it's lovely, but it doesn't have the furnace, and we're perfectionists, and we put a lot of value in the furnace in the whiskey. So you had this most beautiful nose and beautiful palate, but the furnace was quite short and quite, you know, abrupt. And we waited it out, and waited it out, and waited it out, and we we're getting to the point where we weren't, we weren't too sure that the furnace would ever come. Yes. But it had been one or two casts that were ahead of the rest. Cast 193 was way ahead of the rest. And about this time last year, the furnace just appeared in cast 193, and it was just went on forever, and it was so sugary. That dimmer air sugar that just lines your mouth in the same way as the oil is doing, just cooks your mouth and went on forever. And we knew, yeah, we, we, we knew it. Uh, it was now, yet, it was now yet two months off and 18 years old, and we were having a great 18 year old release. So what we done was we bottled it out in March of this year, April of this year. Okay. We wanted to get it out of the cask because it was just right. How to get it out of the cask into bottles, and we were waiting for from April to May on the, the package and uh, and everything else that's inside the box to arrive. Okay. Um, so what was the idea to do such? I mean, the packaging look initially from the outside it's like a. A keyboard finish almost as a lacquer to the hilt. Well, uh, well yeah, I mean, in, in fairness, Shane, Shane drives a lot of this um, 
And it was Shane's wish, it was Shane's wish to, like I said before, to put out a release that would really get people's attention. That would once and for all get people attention with dumbbells. And he had this idea of this, um, as you see, a, a, maybe a 12 inch square lacquered wooden box. Um, in the old dumbbells, um, colours, uh, lovely gold uh, print on it. Uh, and it, it it's in, in the flash, it, it's quite striking. Um, it, it really is. And heavy. And very <laughs> heavy. You don't very want heavy. to drop this. No. But it's what's inside the box that's really exciting. And what's inside the box that I think we've taken it to a whole new level. And maybe something that hasn't been done before in Irish whiskey, or certainly not, not been done that I'm aware of. Maybe you would have more. Um, of a reach in what's been out there and what you've tasted before, but I'm not aware of anything just quite like this in, in the Irish whiskey market. Well, certainly from the outside of what so, I've seen so far, you know, so, it's hard for us to find yeah, one. So I, I think we'll look at the box and see what's in there and talk you through it. Yeah. So we'll very carefully lift this. Um, you can feel the weight of that lid. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's and substantial. And we'll, we'll see later on why that's so heavy. Okay. Uh, so we'll just put that down here. It's like opening an album. It's opening, an, it's like opening a, a, a double sleeve um, LP back in the day. Yeah. Uh, doesn't know where LPs are. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Anne Marie, my sister, who works in the, the PR side of the distillery, has been spending the last year, along with uh, some help from Serge, you also help from Philander Connor, on um, uh, various people who knew the Dunbar's family and worked in the distillery or had relatives and who worked in the public records office. Uh, gathered as much history about the brand as we possibly can. Um, guys like Charlie Woods have been very helpful too in sending us up all these old, uh, as what Charlie does. Yes. And um, gathered up material and sending them up, and we're thankful to all those guys. And what we have is we put together uh, this lovely hardbound book on, on the history of Dundas from 1808 to present. So this will go back to the very start of the Royal Irish Distillers Dundas brand and take you right the way through to um, its reincarnation in 2012 and the current releases. And we have been about a year um, collating the material and assembling that book, and obviously that's held the release. So these are um, the old advertising um, posters so yeah, we, and the we, advertising we campaigns? Have advertising, we have advertising campaigns as far away as Australia and Argentina, wow. and obviously a lot more local. So the reach um, went as far as Australia? Oh yeah, I mean, Dunfels was worldwide released. Dunfels was, was massive, in, massive in South America, mm -hmm. massive in uh, Australasia uh, as well. But I suppose really, like, like all these old Irish whiskey brands, and, and this is what's quite lost on some people today, you know, Irish whiskey travelled with the British Empire. Yes. You know, back in the back in the heyday of Irish whiskey, it, it, it correlated with the heyday of the British Empire, and that was no accident. You know, I mean, whenever you're, whenever you have written your only covered half the world, you have half the world as a market. You know, and, yes. and all those colonies are are, are, are markets for, 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 for British and Irish produce. Yeah. Obviously, Dublin was the second city of the empire. Belfast probably fourth, fifth, sixth. You know, but um, yeah, so you know, uh, all all these whiskies back in that period where, where and Dunbells especially, Dunbells had a very aggressive, a very aggressive and modern advertising campaign, mm -hmm. campaigns back in the day, you know, that, that are actually a lot of fun to, to read today. Yeah, and we can see some of those in yeah, this. And, and so yes, you, you will find all, you'll find all that and more in this book. Yeah. Um, well, it's one that appreciates uh, book and paper and well, certainly I'm and it was impressed with uh, the publication yeah, quality as well. Important. It was very important to have something that felt good in your hand, you know, yeah. and... Uh, it's tactile and... It's, 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 very, it's a very attack uh, and obviously a real lovely companion to a glass of whiskey. Yeah. Um, yeah, so after that, yeah, we will pull out very carefully the, the 18 year old rum furniture and show you the label. So, uh, these will all be hand signed, cast numbered and bottle numbered by Shane uh, in, in this space below. This one's not done yet, um, because we haven't released yet. So, uh, and will the cast strength you expect it to be the same? No, the, the cast strength very, no, it doesn't vary very much. Uh, we have cast five cast. We've bottled out five casts so far. There's three casts that are just a wee bit behind, and, and they're still coming through. And we're varying from 56.8 to 57.1. And the, the point, no, not a lot of variance. Uh, but in fairness, whatever you stand on side by side, there, there, there's multiple differences, albeit the, the, the same thing that we're shooting throughout. Uh, it's a beautiful label as well, actually. You know, we're matching the outside box and also. Well, well yeah, I mean, another thing about Dunville, another thing we're trying to do with Dunville, we're trying very much to recreate that old brand image, to try and take the Dunville's of old and give them a modern feel, but very much based on the colour palette, on the textures, on the fonts, on the, the that heritage brand. Yes. And we're trying very much to put Dunville's forward in that heritage brand's category. Um, 
Yeah, so that's the um, that's the eighteen year old. It's a seriously heavy box actually. Yes, yeah, so given it's it's full time or Dundell's VR eighteen year old syndrome malt port morant rum furnish Irish whiskey. Okay. Um, but, uh, the, the, was the longest, yeah. the longest yeah. title in Irish whiskey. Hashtag. Um, yeah. So we put that, uh, we, we let that rest there. And I suppose when I, when I talk about um, trying to do something that hasn't been done before, and, I, and I've said that, um, we've been tasting this whiskey for two, for, for two years now, you know, in Dublin, in Whiskey Live and in Belfast Social. I'm not talking about Belfast Social today, hence the, um, the, the, the horn and the most prains in the background. And, um, and, you know, we talk about rum furnace a lot, we talk about what the rum brought to the whiskey, and we thought, you know, we really, to, to do this properly, we could go and put a bottle of the rum in the package. Yeah. In other words, this is 41 year old Port Morant rum. This was just never happened again. Port Morant distillery fell silent in the early to mid 70s. Yes. It, it was the last wooden still in the world. It was a, it was a coffee still on Anya's Coffee's design. Yeah. Uh, and it was, a, it was a, a wooden coffee still they used, but it was a very, very soft rum. And then what Port Morant estate the Stillery done that was very different also was they would have lined their casks with trichro molasses before they filled them. Okay. And they would have let it sit there for in, in the sun for maybe two, three, four weeks so that molasses, that trichro molasses would dry into the wood. Okay. And then they would put the ends in the cask and would fill the cask out. And over the first six months, that Demerara rum whiskey would soak up and dissolve all those trichro yeah. um, sugars into the rum and give it a real head start and a real kick of Demerara sugar. And real dark muscovado flavors, you know. So, um, and then it was in a, it was in a, it was in that cask for twenty years, and then it was switched to a bourbon cask, to an ex bourbon cask, and it stayed in that bourbon cask for twenty one years. Okay. And it, it's absolutely breathtaking in its complexity. Um, so a rum finished in its original cask, and then in a bourbon cask. In a bourbon cask, yeah. There is no cask after twenty one years. It was probably starting to draw out some of those bitter. Yes, you, you don't want in there, so they switched the cask, thankfully, because it eat you then. And then it brought up, it brought through these vanillas and bourbon flavors into the rum as well, but it, 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 the, the, the story of this rum is very much just these really rich, dark demerara sugars, banana breads, yeah. creme brulees, probably the creme brulees maybe come from the bourbon and the char more than it is coming from the rum cask, um, but it's just that perfect, that, 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 that perfect marriage. Um, and we, and we talked about this rum so much that we thought, you know what, why don't we just go out? And this rum retails online for two thousand two hundred pounds a bottle. Okay. But we knew the guy that we, we, we knew the guy that um, that sold us the cast and we approached him and we got a a, 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 a small discount, but a different nonetheless to buy um, to buy enough of the rum to put um, a small bottle of the rum itself in every release. So, so this isn't the whiskey itself. This, this is, is not the original rum. This is not the whiskey. This is a small bottle of the forty-one-year-old Port Morant rum. This oh. doesn't. This stuff doesn't exist anymore. I mean, you I know, mean th that th on its own is uh, well, th th so fascinating. Th th that 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 bottle costs us about fifty-six quid. Well, the, 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 the rum. Yeah. It's ridiculous how it's done. But I mean, the, the colour of that is. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's really it's quite. Um, it, it's a once in a lifetime. And actually, the viscosity of, is very. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it is. You could probably start a pencil up on that. It, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's not what you expect to taste when you taste rum. Whereas yeah. it's not that bright, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Caribbean flavors. It is just hardcore demerara sugar, and it's just layer upon layer upon layer of flavors. Yeah, yeah. Banana, the banana bread comes through in butterfuls. Um, once it's once you have it in the glass for 10, 20 minutes, and it opens up. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, it's one thing to it's one thing to talk about the finish yeah. and everything else, but whenever we have a, a, a whiskey, this where the finish is so important. What a, what better way of what better way of letting everybody else experience that than to put this in, yeah. than to put the rum itself in the package, and you can taste the rum and you can understand completely what the rum has brought to the whiskey. Yeah. And I think that is something that hasn't been done. when I said that, that's something that I don't believe has been done before in an Irish whiskey. I'm certainly not not um, familiar with the original. You know the original liquid that was used in the past being used. Yeah, and, and it was really just. I mean, if, if I want to talk about the problems of that of that original rum liquid, sharing it with sharing it with anybody who buys this package, uh, this collector's item, is a, it, it's it's a different whiskey experience. Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. I mean, yeah, it's all about just experiences. And it's all about you know, trying something you haven't done before and broadening your taste horizons. Just yeah. different experiences. And, 
And this will just be such a tactile experience, you know, tasting the rum, tasting the whiskey, etc. You know, I've been taking this whiskey home for three years and trying it as it, as it, as it changes, and I have samples, and I refer back quite often to the 17, to the 16, and try and convert to this to see where it is and how it changes. But ultimately, this the finishes in this whiskey, and that was so important to us. Um, and it, but they're different animals. But even tasting this for six months, and the first time you try this, I'll blow your head. Yeah. Because it's just not what you expect. And it really so what does What percentage would this be at? Do you know, I think that's up around the 48, 49. Um, Which is strong enough for a rum as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's 48. And my glasses are not on. But uh, yeah, I mean, but again, both in the bottle at 57% and in the rum, it doesn't come through. But those sugars, the, 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 those thick, rich Demerara treacle sugars just line, line the alcohol, line your mouth, and it just. Yeah. You know, it almost it, it lines up in the same way as oil as well and just creates that lovely... Almost pot still in nature. Oh yeah, almost pot still in nature, very much so, but it's oils and the sugars are lying near my so it's, it's, it's very different and it fizzes your tongue and, yeah. you know, and funny, it's a whiskey that, um, it's 57% and it doesn't take water at all. And you were there, you, you were with yeah. us, I believe, about a year ago whenever we tried the water lift down to 54, yes, yeah, 52, and you, yeah. you, you said that yourself. No, I, that, and I was um, worried that you, something that was going to happen was that it was going to be watered Well, do you know what, I mean, at that, we, we, we would have dropped more bottles, but yeah. funny here, we, we, we believe in putting whiskey out of it's perfect, and you know, enough that's what we try and do, and, and with this especially, but it doesn't take water, like, even bringing it down from 57 to 54 had a massive effect on it. The, the, those, Demerara sugar elements just vanish in it. And it, it took me a long time to figure out why. And I, I could be wrong here, but I think that I think that at, at 57% and there's so much sugar in there. That the sugars are almost crystallizing out of the liquid. Yeah. And they're sitting there and they're just right at the edge of crystallizing out and therefore look, they have a, they really play with your tongue and your in the mouth fit and the flavour. I think as you add water, those sugars just dissolve back into the water. Yeah. And therefore you lose that. What you lose that sugar just on the edge of coming out and crystallizing. I, I could be completely wrong, but no, I've been tasting this whiskey for a long time, and that's what I think. But you, you have tasted it yourself, and no, I, I, and I remember like bringing it down even by one yeah, percent I mean, the it, last it, it, time. It makes uh, I'm just uh, shocked. It had a mad. Yeah, I've never, I've never tasted a whiskey before that has such little additions of water had such a massive effect on yeah, it. Um, yeah. 